Hello, Happy New Year. Welcome to another exciting episode on Top Talks on OPC Television, sponsored by Sunders Communication. The year has been, you know, a lot, the past year, I mean, mm-hmm. and it's so great to see another year, Kaidi. Um, it's really, 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 really great. Like, ah, 2020. So we can leave this 2020. Of course, we did. <laughs> I, I thought this 2020 would just carry everybody, but it's really nice to be in another year. Another year, yes. Thank God. It's yeah. very nice. So we're also glad that you guys are also there and we all made it through another year. Yes, we'll be so. right back after this break. Yeah. Welcome back. My name is Ifeolu Atoyevi. And my name is Alagwe Kayode. On this episode on Top Talks, we're going to be looking through the year 2020 issues that occurred that got international and local you know reactions and how these issues were managed from citizens to government to organizations and all of that so Kadi. yeah so 2020 only one year has about eight different, different versions of itself yes it's a really really peculiar a very really unique year yeah. uh, we had insecurity mm-hmm. the first covid 19 we oui. when people were like ah the world is like coming to an end. end. We had lockdown, mm-hmm. lockdown for about like two months, I guess mm-hmm. two months. We also have the issue of rape, consistent Sent raping, rape, domestic violence yeah. due to the lockdown. After people now came in, they are on strike again. I think they even they went on strike before COVID, didn't they? No, they didn't even go on strike before COVID. They allowed all this COVID everything issue. They will now started their own strike. We no had we also had NSAS protesters, mm-hmm. terrorism. And we now had another feast of COVID nineteen. That bid the year <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> like Jesus. Twenty twenty has it has different shades to himself. Let's start with the first one. Hmm. When we came into twenty twenty, yeah, January, I think towards the end of twenty nineteen, we've been hearing of the wave of COVID nineteen hmm. in the Western yeah. world. We've already been here, but I guess down here we just didn't see it coming. Hmm coming here and we came in january february i think said from february yeah february nigeria. 27 or yeah. so or thereabouts nigeria had our first covid 19 case and italian i think yeah no, it depends on from poland poland yeah poland. it was okay. from poland so um insecure and the sorry covid 19 wave and first i just want to be grateful that it did not take too much toll on nigeria, nigeria. you know if you check our neighboring countries like um south africa and Algeria, Egypt, these people they have high rocketed numbers of these COVID nineteen cases. cases yeah. But if you look at Nigeria, maybe to some extent we have been able to manage to it. manage it and we have been and it's going well. The number of disease, the number of fatalities That was, was the first wave, right? Yes, yeah, the, the first wave. The, the, number the, of, the government actually raised yeah, yeah, they to tried to in terms extent. of rising to that the lockdown, mm. you know actually declaring a lockdown in some states, major states that are experiencing high number of um, of COVID-19 cases, you know, the reduction of buses, occupants, you have mm-hmm. to take two, you know, bus, of uh, Yes, economically it was a lot because a lot of companies it's not something that, off. It's not something that Nigerians should should also to partake in again. again this COVID-19, we, can't is, we, can, we, can, we cannot go we through can't. it again. We can't go through it again. Because a lot of companies laid off staffs, a lot of people slashed their salary, a lot of people had to work from home, and working from home, their salary was not consistent, you know, and, you know, you just, you, you just look at that time, it, it kind of seemed like a lot of people went into depression, mm. people, people were like, how, how do we cope, even when the lockdown was called, called off, when people started working, mm. there was still this fear of uncertainty. There's still this fear of how do we put life back together? How do business start running, you know, again? And looking at the fact that after the open called of the lockdown, some businesses were still mm, on yes. lockdown. Entertainment. I know how much virtually every every um, sector of the economy mm. today has something to do with that sector. So and they were on hold. Schools were still on lockdown. So about September, mm, I think, yes, aside yes, ASU, yes. schools under ASU and all of that. So it was it was really a terrifying moment for the entire mm. universe. And Nigeria, it wasn't a good one yeah. for us. It was a really long, wrong time because mm. our economy was already going through 
a face then we now experience such a thing we had the mm-hmm. lockdown we we had so many things so it, it, it's so but me I, I i just feel it's brought out a positive reaction because if you say it was a it was a bad time yes mm-hmm. but if this stuff did not happen the government were not going to do anything to our health sector, sector. they're not going to do anything concerning our economy and all those things now we have many many hospitals now that we can go to because of this but i still saw something yesterday of somebody who said on twitter that he he went to dubai mm. during the festive period and getting to the airport they run his coronavirus test immediately he got mm-hmm. to result and coming back to nigeria i got to the airport at abuja i think and um they said okay he would go for a covid 19 test mm. okay in lagos then he said okay when is it to go to the test he told him he has to pay for five thousand euro <laughs> for the test and then he would not go to the hospital to run the test so he was now asking i'm going to the hospital to run the test would i pay at the hospital sure. there was no response they just said uh, all they know is that the 45,000 euro he has to pay is for lagos state government hmm. that, that that wasn't encouraging because i feel like with the rate at which the pandemic Yes. is growing if we don't want to experience what we experienced earlier on in 2020 then covid 19 shouldn't be something we start going you know, back and forth you know, about they, it should be a testing there should be testing kits at the airport for free it should be free it's not something you know before this um this ss3 students before they went back for their wife yeah. they first proposed that okay um for them to go back to class they must pay fifty thousand naira for covid 19 19 before tests. people started saying no why why should this happen mm-hmm. you understand so still negligence on the part of our government that they don't see, realize that these things eh, there it is their own duty as our uh, head yeah, yeah, to do guys. these things it, we should not be paying fifty thousand for a problem that we did not create Great. Exactly. and the most risky one i think reading what that guy wrote yesterday mm. is actually the fact that the airport should be the most important place where yes, covid 19 testing kit should be made available because People are coming. People in. are coming in. People are going out. Uh, 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 during the, the, there's been a hike worldwide on the virus, mm. and then we had a lot of Nigerians went to Dubai. Oh a lot yes. of Nigerians went to this country, people went nice. to that country, and these people are coming yeah. back. Fine, they've been tested in those countries when they g- went in. Mm. Were they tested when they were coming out? They visited places. Definitely not. People, you know, it's not about your country. Con- when you're coming to my own country. You need to get tested. tested. When so, you're going going, out, so it is not the responsibility of Nigeria to test those people because once they come in, mm. they are not being properly tested or they are not tested at all and they come into Nigeria mm. and they mix with people again. Yes. So I feel like the airport is a major um, place where COVID-19 tests. It's, it's not a place where they should be no. going back and forth demanding money asking you to go to one hospital um, or the other. If you ask someone mm. to go to the hospital and the person does not go, mm. how would the government know? COVID nineteen figures now and now are now on four digits. Mm-hmm. Now we are seeing cases of one thousand and something, even almost two thousand now. Mm-hmm. And we like, you know, as at the beginning of this COVID nineteen, I was working, I was training with a friend. I was like, so this because you no, know, we didn't have much knowledge of mm-hmm. what was happening. Nothing. We were all scared. They were like, everything the world is coming to an end, something like that. <laughs> so like, everything is just going to go. So mm-hmm. COVID nineteen taught us a really really valuable lesson that i hope we learned because the truth remains a lot of nigerians still do not believe that the pandemic exists a lot of us are still and it does i saw a report of arise tv Mm. where they they did on covid19 patients i saw the videos i watched it if we were saying the one we saw in 2020 were not real now they're they're actually reports there are videos there are people coming out to say because our airport has been opened since around june last year or thereabouts and people were going in and out and those countries they visited are now having large numbers of the, the the virus at the moment so Please, this where you I beg. Let's just wear our face masks. Let's take this thing serious. You, hmm. anyways, we hope we um things get better. Moving on to the next, we um in twenty twenty we had the lockdown. We've said that with COVID nineteen. Yeah, we that with the COVID nineteen. And the, incre- so. the lockdown brought increase to issues like domestic violence yes. and um um sexual uh, violence. We yes, we had we had issues. Uh, a we major had case cases, and we also. I think the Uwa from yes, Edo, Uwa, Uwa from Edo Uwa was a major was case and, then and killed. killed. We had a girl uh, from Ibadan as well who was also raped and killed. Um, another case, I think 
during that, that period there were about three different cases and there were numerous cases of husband molesting their wives mm. and vi- you know she there were a lot of and um research said it was due to the lockdown a lot of people were at home a lot of people were um jobless and all of that that led to such increase the the oas case was one that really generated reactions you know, all fu- over funny enough funny enough where we're having a discussion mm-hmm. and we're talking about this domestic violence mm-hmm. and it was always i'm not someone that i speak for both genders mm-hmm. and it's not only the females that have been molested, that yeah. been molested and someone was like ah the female's body is different i said not about the female's body yeah. i miss them i have the male but i have a male body too and i know that is there's nothing that is that is from your own side that is not also affecting me also mm-hmm. we have different scenarios yeah, and recently of we have the issue of don david yes, the, the boy another. from deeper life um boarding school who was molested yes. by senior colleagues oh you even saw the story yes. so things like that they are moving but when it comes to the the, the um, female the, gender the female gender small it's everywhere it's yes. everywhere um i saw something on twitter where somebody said um if don davis was a lady mm-hmm. would have had the likes of yes, feminist sir. school and all of them raising their voice for him but there was barely a day i come on twitter and hashtag justice for don david was trending all he, of the cancara boys reflected all of the cancara boys reflected reflected no the cancara boys there were a lot of noise around them no, but but the time when when this bring back our girls it was even became a a brand the bring, uh, yeah, bring, ba- it was bring back our girls lasted so for Kankara boys i can it can actually be justified because mm. the moment i came online that morning mm. i found out about the Kankara boys issues on twitter but for Don Davies, I, I would okay. say it's from a, a human perspective, not being male or female, there's not been enough reaction like it would have gotten if he was a girl. Yeah. Especially a 10 years or 11 years old boy. If he was a girl, imagine the reaction that I've gotten. Hashtag justice yeah. for this. Deeper life that I've gotten so much reaction. Yeah, people are talking That's about enough. it, but I feel like it's not enough. So we need to balance the equation when it comes to justice for um, both male and mm. female children, so we don't bring up a generation of men who feel uh, on un- uncared okay. for, men who feel men. neglected, ah, okay. and a generation of women who Meet. feel whatever Meet. I do, people mm. will support me. That's why we have lady coming out to accuse I'm men wrongly because there's a perception that um, I am a lady. Mm-hmm. So I, I am I, I am unique. True. Yes, we understand that mm. the, the female gender face a lot of issues, yeah. you know, in past time and presently. But there's been a lot of call. There's been a lot of noise around security for the female child. And I feel at this point we need to balance the equation yes. because times have changed. Mm. We have people who are molesting male children. Yes. We have their house. I've even have, I, I read a story of a guy who said is the housemaid was. You know, molesting him mm. while they were growing up till mm. he turned thirteen. Mm. That that's the first time he was actually talking about it. Mm. There are numerous issues like this. So if we can raise so much awareness when it happens to the female gender, such should also go to mm. the male gender, yeah. especially when they are children. Especially when they are children. And kudos to Don Davis' mom. She's mm. she's somebody that despite not getting a lot of reaction she kept speaking mm. up and that's good for the mental health of the of the boy very good okay so let's go to um the NSAS protest mm-hmm. you know let's even leave the NSAS I'm um, going to the the um, what they call it President Mabodi's Barry speech, speech on January the beginning of this year mm-hmm. um it would have been better if he just gave everybody the script and see go and read what I what I've written because you know the passion is not there. The zeal is not there. It's like cannot, somebody wrote it's it. It's like somebody does you know, normally. You know, most of us are our politicians. Of course, no so it's like it's like you just handed him the paper and like, okay, just read and just go. You know, it's not about we are not saying that you know he was talking and he mostly talked about the youth. That mm-hmm. the you are talking about the youth and we still knew what happened in, in the end of protest. We still saw so what, what the, and the, the, is the this is still going on. The yeah, Lagos but, panel. Me, you know, I told you one time. I said once Lagos State is in charge of the Lagos panel, what do you expect? It cannot. This, it well, cannot be well, fruitful. Well, let's just hope that mm. something come out of it. But one thing 
I would always say the NSAS protest did mm. was to awaken the yes. Nigerians. It's, it definitely and Nigerian, did. Nigerian, be it old, young, mm. because these are things we could see. Mm. It's not a situation of um, they said in 1999. No, because a lot of this younger generation, the stories we hear about Nigeria, the civil war, mm. the this, the that, there were things that has happened in the past, yes. but for the first time, especially those of us in, in, in the 90s, we were able to see that, look, if we do not rise up, mm. if we don't stand up and do something, these things are going to continue. Our parents tell us of how they use 20 Naira mm. to do this, how they traveled out with, you know, for free, right. how they had scholarship, I and we just, we are just here, and it kind of seemed like we 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 came at the wrong you know, time it, you would seem like personally we start believing that um, you know this is when no, we came we go no, better no. they've been saying it for my daddy's generation mm. they've been saying it for my grandpa's generation <laughs> but answers actually made it feel like look this is not how life is supposed to be because we travel outside the country we see people we see things a lot of nigerians visited dubai recently mm. we see their pictures online is it wrong if Nigeria is actually the tourist site. Everybody mm. comes to during festive season. Mm. I mean, Dubai, yeah. I mean, they're also a oil producing Pushing nation. Yes, no. So if they can be the run first spot for um, tourism mm. and season celebration, all of, what stops Nigeria? What yeah. stops Obudukatsu Ranch being something like that? We have a lot of things like that. So, enters are working people. And has made us understood that look, election is your duty. You don't wait that ah, eh, let my mommy let them go mm. and vote. We became aware that look, our mommy's generation you know, is going. Is now. I was now I was, I was going to Ikerudu one day and at Oshodi we wanted to get the BRT bus and somebody on my back, and he was just shaking it head and I was like ah, so what happened? Is there any problem? And he said that there was a time that he was if you wanted to go to Liberia. He would not spend more than 500 naira and he said if he goes to liberia it's you just goes there to enjoy himself and he mm -hmm. comes back home he said he was talking about the amount he, they used to spend to eat good meals he said you can't you can't go to somewhere and put 200 naira and say you want to eat food no you know it's not possible so and South Africa, I have to see the, the kind of situation that we are in Nigeria. Really, really bad. I was talking to somebody from Poland and, and the girl said, so, Rakari, by the time I'm going to come back here, I'm a millionaire. Mm -hmm. And I was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, it's true. You know, you know that's how bad the Naira and is what now. she doing? She's not really, it's not as if she's doing um, the... Sorry to cut, cut you. Poland yeah. is even far. A quick one. Benin Republic. I was mm. home during yeah. the first season. But agree. Yeah, okay. And you know, because we're close to the border, mm. so somebody I was listening on radio and they're like, they said, though the border is open, mm. but people are no longer oh, going oh. to Benin Republic to buy things. Mm. So I, I I was speaking with an elderly woman and say, and my mom they were discussing like, ah, why everybody should go in buy things? But mm. I said, do you know the naira and the Benin? I think they and used to um, Sefa. Yes. Is almost now the same thing. So when you <laughs> leave Nigeria to go and buy something of one thousand, you are holding one thousand naira. You are going to buy it around nine hundred mm -hmm. and something naira. So what's no, the why, use? Why, why you now? So why, why do I go, go there? there? Things are expensive there because there? their money is almost equivalent with Nigeria and money. Years, I mean, this four years is ago, Benin Republic. Four years ago, I had one of my aunts that came from France. I know she went to go and see her family in Benin. So when they were coming so i i ex checked the exchange rates mm -hmm. um 1000 naira was 600 and something i mean, I mean 600 naira was a 1000 um so, or something, something like that yeah. so when you're not seeing the way the nigerian um the naira is devaluing and like every currency in africa now is better than you see ghana cities now mm -hmm. i think about 60 ghana cities is 3600 naira Sixty Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. We you really know? this new year. The truth remains, we Nigeria needs to do more. Yeah. And whether we like it or not, there is little I can do from my house. Mm. There is little. The only thing I can do is to wake up in the morning, go to work, earn myself a living. Mm. Then the rest is in the hands of the government because we pay our tax. It's, Don't tell us. I saw a, I saw a tweet from mm. one of um, the president's spokesperson, um, Gabal or something. Mm. He said, we Man complain as if we pay our tax or something. I was really... No, don't tell me I don't pay my tax. Mm. 
if I were not to be working, if I am a student, mm. I pay value added tax. Yes, no. I buy things and you it pays taxes. Uh, so don't go ahead and tell us that we complain about things in the country when we don't pay our tax like others do around the mm. world. No, stop it. People pay their tax. They do actually. So it, it, it's not an excuse, not for us to have a standard of living every other person up in the in the um, developed yes, nation. No. So this is a clarion call to our government, to even those of us working as well. This new year, I think we should just put things together. We've seen what happened in 2020. Mm. Imagine if that sort of things happen. We are, will we have an economy that can mm. accommodate it? So 2021, we hope that things get better for Nigeria. And, and yeah, talk, and, talk is very cheap. Yeah. Talk is cheap. Please, if there's an action that should be carried out, carried out. just carry out this action. Um, we are talking about Bonu now. Bonu is not even safe again. Not even safe for the government. Them, yeah, themselves that was to show how bad it is, bad it is so, so you is there's nothing that go to these places i think we have armed forces now <laughs> it's not why we have these people when you have we've a, always when it comes to security we've always said it we cannot em- over emphasize the importance of security so mm. we feel that when we talk the nation development generally security falls under it so if nigeria grows mm. economically Definitely, there will be resources to fight the security issues and all of that. So, as we go into the new year, we, we we just we can only hope and pray that things get better. But God is not going to come down. So, the responsibility falls on the shoulder of our leaders to rise up to the challenge for a better Nigeria. Hmm. We can go on and on and on, but we have to call it a day. And we hope that you've enjoyed this episode it, just as yeah, we have yeah, done here. Yeah, allow me to remember someone said uh, we said that uh, God is going to give me car. I said God is not going to give you car. Better go and work. Work. So that's the situation. Work, you say God, you God can't work. come down here You're and your actually own. do anything for us. We have to work yes. and we just pray he helps us. So next episode, yeah. do join us and yeah. keep staying safe for the sake of yourself and others around you. Have an amazing week. Bye. Bye-bye.